Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello there. It's me again, Patricia Leonard, and I'm your host on Hello Self Podcast. As you remember, our mission is helping you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. 2024 is the time to get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and manifest them now. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Well, at least our intention over the last three podcasts. This is the fourth podcast in a series of four looking at your next chapter, focusing on the next chapter in your life. And I say that this is one of the most important uh, steps that you can be taking is to address who you are and start producing those things that show people who you are and show yourself because that's the person we have to convince most of the time. So what I've done in this last podcast of the four podcast series is we I'm going to review where we've been and what we've done and then a call to action at the end because remember we have to learn how and take action not only commit but then take action on our commitments so that's what this podcast is specifically about is taking actions on the things that you've learned about yourself and the desires you have from the first three podcasts. And I hope you've been listening to all of them and doing what they've asked you to do, or at least looking at it. We've been looking at ourselves and saying, now that we know who we are, our hello self moments that we may have had, that we're going to focus on what we're going to be doing in the next chapter of our life. And that's this year. (laughs) So here we go. Let's get started and see where you are and hopefully help you make a commitment. And I know you're doing great. Those of you who have followed what we've been talking about in episode one, episode two, and episode three, you have given yourself a chance to get to know yourself a little better. So I'm saying to you, Give yourself a pat on the back or remember in the Hello Self book, at the end, you get an Oscar. So couldn't this be better timing? It's Oscar time or just right past Oscar time. So give yourself an Oscar. And in the book, I have given you an Oscar for completing. And that's what you get here is remember the book is written like a movie. So it's frame one, instead of chapters, it's frame one, frame two. So when you get to the last frame, bravo for you. And that's when you get your Oscar. So give yourself a pat on the back for the draft of your self-discovery screenplay that you've done, created as you've gone through the first three episodes. In the first three episodes, we just completed for your upcoming 24 production focused on your next chapter. So you just put together the the screenplay of your life and the episodes have covered that, helping you move forward on the next chapter. After all, you have now spent some time on the previous three seminar podcasts, becoming awakened to the knowing of who you are at this point in your life. Oh, sure, we're always evolving, but this is a check-in at where you are, and remember 2024, we're calling that our next chapter. You've looked at the mask you wear. Oh, yeah, we, we all wear them. And we may not admit it, 
We do it to fit in. We do it because we don't think that we've got enough talent. What are the reasons? You discovered those in the podcast that we did. Not only have you looked at the mask you wear, the next thing is the mindsets. What are some of the mindsets that you've created? And that's what we've been looking at that limit you. I'm too old, not pretty enough, not smart enough. You know, the mindsets that you have. Don't have enough money. We've been looking at the mask, the mindsets, and the what and why commitments made for the next chapter. So why do you do what you do? Who are you? We've talked a little bit about that already. These podcasts have surely awakened you with significant evidence that the world and society is in a transition. I hope you've been able to see that. Requiring transformative life and mind shift or mindset shifts. So not only changing our life at this point, making it better, waking up to who we truly are and acknowledging that. I was just talking to my sister the other day and she said that she has really begun to look at who she is and starting to see and even giving herself a pat on the back when she does something good. She said, I used to always say, oh, that wasn't good enough, or yeah, you could have done this. I still do that. (laughs) I'm still working on me, too. And anyway, she said, I can now stand up and look in the mirror and say, hey, you know, that wasn't bad. That was pretty good. You did a good job. So those mindsets that we've had, let's let go of them. That's what she was telling me. I'm starting to let go and I'm noticing myself letting go of those mindsets about who I am and what I am capable of doing. Now, Hello Self ask each of you to assess whether or not your present thinking, your beliefs and perceptions will support a productive and successful journey into your next chapter. So that's why we've looked at that. We jump into the next chapter a lot in our lives or the next thing we're going to do or, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start a business. We haven't even done any of the thinking about what the business is, why I should do it. What am I going to do when I get to the point that nothing seems to be going right? So we don't do a lot of that front end work. And that's what the first three podcasts have been our intention there is to help you think through some of that so you can have a good journey in your into your next chapter and a successful next chapter. The work has been about awakening to the knowing of who you are. And, you know, I, I think others know us before we know ourselves. It's often interesting when I'm, well, just talking to in everyday life with people, not even coaching and talking to them about who they are and what they, and they have no idea. They have no idea. Well, let me tell you, I get confused right about myself too. So this is not anything new. It's a full-time job to say hello self. <laughs> So as a way to ignite your flame of desire for living the next chapter, honoring your authenticity. And that has been what our pre-work is about. It's so we can have a successful next chapter and ignite the flame of desire that we move forward and get committed to it and acknowledge ourselves along the way. I like celebration. I was, like I said, I was talking to my sister and I said, I like Atta Girls. As a matter of fact, if somebody gives me an Atta Girl, I got a file, I stick it in. And then I go to that Atta Girl file when I'm down in the dumps. (laughs) And then I remember, oh, they probably just said that. You know how you come right back to your mindset. No, Patricia, you're not in that mindset anymore. So let me tell you, 
this is not something that I'm sitting here and acting like I'm an expert. As a matter of fact, all the coaches you've probably hired in your life have as many problems as you do. <laughs> uh, doesn't mean we're experts. I don't care who says they're an expert. They're not. If they are, they've come to the end of their learning. No, we're not experts. If we're living life and paying attention to who we are and every day saying hello self, every moment saying hello self, then I don't call that an expert. It's somebody who is aware of themselves and sharing that information that it might help somebody else. And it does often. So let's briefly review each of the episodes as a reminder. Episode one, getting to know yourself by removing the mask that each of you accepted and or society has labeled you with. Because sometimes as a woman, we're labeled, well, you know how women are. And uh, I was talking to two friends today. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm always talking. But I was talking to two friends today. And you know, yesterday, you may not, uh, this may be coming out at a different time, but yesterday was Valentine's Day. And so we just had a little conversation. What did your husband get you? And then they went into this tirade about, oh, uh, well, he said he was going to call, but he didn't at that time. And then, so we went on and on about men. So you see how society gives us a label and <laughs> so do our friends and our partners and our family. And it's just a natural process. Doesn't mean it's true. It's just the way it is. And I, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to play on the other side. But then I had a situation that I was sharing too and said, oh, that made me kind of mad too when he didn't do this. <laughs> so, you know, we're always falling back into our old mindsets. But the good thing is we can start laughing about them or starting to catch up with them and say, yeah, yeah, I heard what you said. Men aren't all bad and women aren't all bad and women aren't all good and men aren't. <laughs> We're all living. Okay, so episode one was becoming aware of those masks that we wear. You know, when you're out in public and you got a smile on your face, but deep down inside, you're sad. You know, I wrote a song. Well, I don't write songs. I write song lyrics, somebody reminded me of. But it's called Tears of the Heart. They don't show often. Physically, the tears of the eyes will show, and that tells everybody, oh, she's sad, or he's sad, or they're going through a tough time, but tears of the heart often don't, and those are masks that we wear to hide those tears of the heart. I'm going to record that someday. I think that would be good. <laughs> I know I don't sing, but I'll get somebody to help me. So episode one is about the mask we wear. And I hope that when you went through that episode, you listened to some of the poetry. And because I think a lot of poet art, art expresses so much of who we are and not only expresses it, but gives us an opportunity to view ourselves through art productions or poetry or readings. So that's why I like art so much. I think art is very important to true communication. Okay, so episode one. Episode two was about identifying your mindsets developed and accepted over time. The whole thing is, and I was reading about mindsets and what happens is we develop habits. Just like you probably turn on your blinker on your car when you're going to turn and you don't stop and think, okay, I'm going to turn on my blinker and then I'm going to, go, well, first of all, I'm going to turn right. I got to turn on my, we don't. It's just part of our process. And that's what happens with mindsets. We have accepted it. It has become a habit and we live through the view of that mindset. And I thought, I can't remember who I, who I was reading about, but I thought, 
that is a good way to look at what happens with mindsets. It's just an automatic. I think I said when I was going to have you go through the high heel shoe assessment, I said, now, how many of you had a mindset that said, this is ridiculous? <laughs> so it just is an automatic. Doesn't mean we're good. Doesn't mean we're bad. Doesn't mean we're not thinking. It's just what happens in in our life. And we start to live on by our habits. Just like coming home. We talked about that in the podcast. Just coming home the same way every day. Okay, so identifying your mindsets developed and accepted over time that may have limited the dreams, passions, and truth that you hold in your heart, not head responses. This is why I like to pull people out of their head. I mean, you can do assessments and go through these questions and it jumps right to the head that and those are that's where we store a lot of our mindsets is in the head because ego ego likes to be in control <laughs> so it says i've already recorded that you can't do that or you're from a poor family you can't do that or you're too old i've already recorded that maybe it's an ai stuff <laughs> i don't know but it's already set in our habits and what we're looking at now is becoming aware and awakening, if you will, to the truth, the hello self of who we are. In this episode, we uncovered, and this was two looking at the mindsets. In this episode, we uncovered truth through a shoe assessment. I just said something about, so what and why questions were about shoes? What kind of shoes do you wear? Why do you wear those shoes? Where do your shoes want to go? Why does your shoes want to go there? So you're going to have fun if you go back. If you haven't already done this, go back and do these. But assessments are only ways to make us wake up. But if we always go with assessments that are intellectually focused, we don't wake up the soul, the emotions, the physical reaction, all we do is go to our mind that's got all the answers. Pre-programmed, I might say. <laughs> oh. These outcomes or awarenesses were intended to cause you to remember some of the wishes you had and tossed upon that someday shelf. And so when you're looking at the what and why, what did you toss them up on that shelf and why? So it the assessment is intended to help you discover it's the time now to commit to manifesting those. So hopefully that helps you. I'm turning my sheet now. <laughs> hopefully that helped you start to think about why did I throw that dream? What was a dream I had when I was a little girl? What was a dream I had when I graduated from high school and had to get a job and just threw that dream upon that someday shelf. Hopefully, it made you stop and think about some of those dreams. And we're going to get those dreams off. That's our intention in this. Now, episode three, this was the episode focused on identifying a number one specific commitment and strategy forward. So once we've gone through this assessment and looked at ourselves, the way we're stuck, where we're stuck, if we're stuck, and sometimes we don't even know we're stuck, <laughs> we're sta sitting at that stop stoplight and the, and the light's still red and still red and still red. We never saw it turn green. <laughs> so we don't know when we're stuck sometimes. So this is the time to make a specific hit, uh, commitment. This is your next chapter. Is it going to be like the chapters you've lived before? Are you truly going to get some of those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and make this a different chapter of your life? So number one was specific commitment and strategy forward. Number two in episode three 
I wanted to help you maybe think through some things. Do you want to write a book? You want to start a business? You want to take a songwriting book, a workshop? You want to become a coach? What are some of the things that you're really looking at that you'd like to do? It doesn't have to be something big and glamorous. I was looking at my yard today and thinking about, I, I better talk to the people that mowed my grass last year and to see if they're still willing to take care of my lawn this year. Now, sometimes we would say, oh, who wants to have a job like that? Think of all the advantages and opportunities. Number one, you're outdoors. Number two, you don't have to put up with anybody <laughs> in the work environment. You're just out there. Yeah, you've got customers, but you only see them and you can put on a smile face while you're there. So you only see them as long as they pay, maybe once every month or something like that. But you get to be out of doors. Maybe that's important to you, being out with nature. I, it's not about the celebrityism that we're looking for here. We're simply looking at what would please your soul at this point in your life. There is a woman that stated this on live TV. And she was in show business for a number of years, and she's here now. And somebody had asked her, well, what are you up to now? She said, I got a farm, and I'm out here just working the farm. And she's a diva girl. <laughs> but she has fun doing that. So do I. I love to do stuff like that. Just be out of doors. And as a matter of fact, I go for a walk almost every day or whenever the weather's nice. And I talk to the trees. I talk to the birds. It's a freeing time for me to be out with nature. Find your freeing time. It might be to write poetry. I have a friend that I see at the gym all the time, and she's good at writing poetry. And I said, have you started that book yet? I'll help you. I've written several and I started from scratch and I don't even know, still don't know how to do it, but I can figure it out. But anyway, not only identify what you'd like to do, and I'm going to make you an offer at the end here of something else you might like to do. Maybe you've wanted to perform, be an actress or be an actor or I don't know, dance. Number two in episode three, number one was to find out what your specific commitment was. Number two is, and this is all part of your strategy forward. Number two is what is the time frame? When are you going to start? When are you going to get that done? I'm going to have my book finished in a month. I'm going to put a business plan together and I can help you with that. I have a one page business plan that we can talk about, but to get you over the hump of I don't know where to start. So what is the time frame? That'll make you get anxious about, I better find somebody to help me. And that's what I'm here for, is, is to help you help yourself. You don't have to worry. There's always somebody out there that'll help you. But we don't know where to start a lot of times. Start here. I'll refer you to some other people. I've got a lot of great people that are helpers, are givers. And they have a business too, so they make money. <laughs> and number three in that episode three, so we've got the specific thing you're making a commitment to, the time frame. And then the next step is to identify the next steps. Now, what am I going to do? You're going to make a business card? Not right now, because you don't even know what you're going to do. So you're going to talk to somebody that's doing it. You're going to call me and say, Patricia, do you know somebody I could go to? Or you're going to email me and just tell me what you're interested in. It's very interesting. I work with women in film and television and dress for success. But anyway, I meet a lot of new people coming into town. And they've come here for a specific reason. And they say, do you know anybody I could talk to? 
That's exactly what I do. I help them get started and then they run off and leave me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. My sister tells me this all the time. Sis, you're out there to help others do what they want to do in their life because number one, you've got some good ideas and you're creative. And secondly, you're a kick butt coach. <laughs> So I constantly check in on him, but I have to do that for myself too. So this, we are now after the first three episodes, we're to episode four. And episode four is where it's time to move from talking to walking your talk. Talking your talk ain't going to get it anymore. And your next chapter, and in Hello Self, that's exactly what it's about, is waking you up and then giving you a little shove to get started so you won't be sad. And if you say that I don't know who to go to, I am telling you at the end of this podcast, I'm going to say, here's what you need to do to get started. Give me a call or text me or um, email me and I'll give you that information. No more excuses. 2024 is a year of action. Okay, so it's time to move from talking to walking. The first thing is, what have you decided to take action on? In episode four, that's what you've got to make sure that you're clear about is, what am I going to take action on? Is it writing a book? getting a coach, creating a comedy act. You may think, what's that for? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Learning to write song lyrics. Well, I might have a place for you to do that too. Writing a poem and expressing that poem. Painting a piece of art. Starting art classes. On and on. There's just no end to what you could do. Take a a class at the local university on something you've been wanting to do for a long time. Maybe it's a on religion, on what God's purpose and passion is for each of us in this world. Not specific, but why we were created. There's a lot of different things that you can do to be more clear about who you are. That's what Hello Self is about is offering tips, ideas, suggestions, kind of giving us a little shove to the starting line. And we don't always know if we're going to hit the first ball in the sport, in the softball sports or the baseball sport, but you're not going to hit a home run. You're not going to even hit a first base unless you get up there and swing. <laughs> and I always use sports analogies because... I played a lot of sports, and I was a pitcher on the softball team. That We went to the state, Diamondettes. So it doesn't matter where you went. It doesn't matter about any of that. Did you have fun? And was it fulfilling a part of what you enjoy doing? That's what this is really about. Hello Self is not about being a number one songwriter. I couldn't care less. They're just like you and me. They've got their insecurities and Oh, yeah, maybe they got lucky a couple of times. Well, you will, too. Okay, so I've said something about maybe these are the things. So in episode four, I want you to put a stake down on something like that and put a strategy together just that we started in episode three. Here's what I will offer some suggestions around because this is walking your talk. Commit to perform in one of my High Heels Cabaret productions. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's simply Hello Self taken to a TV show or taken to a live audience. And my whole goal is to give people an opportunity to express themselves. It's not about winning a gold medal or anything like that. The uh, High Heels Cabaret, it all started because my whole life has been focused on wearing high heels in a flip-flop world since I wrote that book. And then I created a one-woman show doing that. So everyone 
has always known my high heel shoes brand. I always say that high heel shoes is just a metaphor for stepping up and stepping in to who you are. Getting out of the flip flop life and and stepping into your high heels. It means stepping into a higher level of understanding of who you are. So high heels thinking. Even men do that. We don't have to wear the shoe. It's just a metaphor so that we all, every time we see a high heel shoe, we think about that. As a matter of fact, I I was approached for my next show, which is April the 7th, if you want to get ready for it. It's April the 7th here in Nashville. And if you're interested in it, you send me a note. But I was approached recently by a young man. And he said, Patricia, I like the mission of your show because the mission is to find out who you are and put it out there in some artistic form. And he said, I'd like to perform in your next show. And I said, so what do you think you could do? He said, well, I'm a comedian. He said, let me put something together about how men see and wear high heel shoes. And I said, you got a deal. So people are just having fun with it. This is not about being perfect. This is to, to, to have fun, to find out who we are and maybe just try some things, give the audience a chance to see themselves and say, well, if he does that, I can do that too. I got an idea. So we get too stuck in our head about the way it's supposed to be. That's a mindset. <laughs> and if you've produced, uh, if you've acted in Broadway shows and you've acted in films that are going out there with million dollar budgets and all of that, then you're probably going to say, oh my gosh, this showed the worst side of me. You're giving somebody else a gift. You're giving yourself a gift just to find out who you are and take one of those masks off that you think you're an excellent actor or actress or singer or whatever. So commit to perform in one of my High Heels Cabaret productions. We'll have more, but April the 7th is one if you're interested. Commit to something locally and share on social media with a tag to number sign, and this will be on the podcast, High Heels Cabaret. So if you put it like that, the video that you do or whatever you do, let me see. It's an audition and you're doing it in your own hometown. Show me what you do. So it, it would be like an audition on Zoom or some video that you're sending in. And I might add that most of these um, productions, these individual performances are about 10 to 12 minutes. So they're not long performances. It might be somebody just asked me if they might put a movie that they're doing, a clip from it. Absolutely. Especially if you're somebody that's just getting started because that is my goal is to help those who have a dream. And it doesn't mean you couldn't have been in it for 40 years and still have the dream. <laughs> I know, I've been there. So commit to something locally and then send it to me. And let's see how we might incorporate that in one of the local High Heels Cabaret shows. Another suggestion, contact me and let's produce a High Heels Cabaret show in your area as a fundraiser for some local causes. I would bring this, audition some of you, and then bring it to your city or your town. And you could provide the, the people to video it. And uh, I would bring some people along or just you and me. It might be something that you decide you want to do in your area and you bring me in to audition you and just as a producer, 
to help you get started. Yeah. So anyway, let's produce a high heel shoe cabaret in your community. It might be for a church cause, fundraiser, community event. Get the people involved. I remember in my hometown in Columbus, Indiana, we brought in somebody from New York to do a production. And my son and I were in it just because we were interested in being in the show. We weren't super actors or actresses, but we wanted to have fun. And so my son and I were in it and we had fun. So contact me, church event, senior campus. I've done this on, not the High Heels Cabaret, but I've done some of my show work on in senior campuses. Oh, oh they love it. They love it. So it, it could be corporate event. I have done the magician act in corporate America. Let me tell you, these go any place and let people learn. Let people learn, not just from a flip chart on the wall or a PowerPoint. I remember one time I was in a manufacturing company doing a workshop. And uh, so I got some feedback afterwards. And I remember this man said to me, Patricia, this is the first time I haven't fallen asleep in our training sessions. I said, well, why is that? What, what was different? He said, because I didn't know what you were going to do next. That's true. <laughs> but I think if we could have some fun and not just make it so linear, blase, people training would be much better. So give me a chance in corporate America to bring in our High Heels Cabaret show. Just maybe four or five years ago, I did a speaking engagement to an organization here in town. And afterwards, I said, I'm not going to ask you for feedback, just like fill out this form, check, what, is it a one or a two or three? I said, over on that table, there are some paper plates, markers, crayons, jewel. I want you to go over there and make a mask out of one of the paper plates. Give me an evaluation on that mask. The woman that hired me said, they'll never do that. I said, well, let's give them a chance. Do you know every one of them, men and women, went up over there and picked up a paper plate and they started talking to each other and they came back and sat down. And so then I said, okay, anybody that would like to share, everybody shared. And they had their mask. <laughs> so we can make it fun and learning. That's why the high heels cabaret. And that's why the high heels, whatever the metaphor is that makes us remember something, is what really changes our life, what really wakes us up. Okay. These are the suggestions I've made in episode four. Another one is reach out to me as a resource if you want help. If you are still stuck, reach out and we'll talk more about it. My email is Patricia, Len Patricia at PatriciaLeonard.net and my website is PatriciaLeonard.net. That's very difficult, isn't it? <laughs> I had to do that so I could remember. <laughs> we'll have um, a little form on this so that you can fill out that form and email it back. So um, whatever you decide to do, I, I just hope that some of these suggestions have made sense for you and that you're willing to create your next chapter in life. And that is to step out of your mask step out of your mindsets, step out of talking about it, but not doing anything about it and start stepping forward. So you could organize a Zoom meeting in your community and ask me to lead the local group in a coaching session around this same thing that we've just done. It might mean that you say, we want a one-on-one -on -one here and there's 10 of us in our organization. 
And we want to think about what we could do in our own organization to do some of the things that you're talking about, to raise money. I Just like Red Hat Society a few years ago, I did my one-woman show here in Nashville, and we raised $4,000 for scholarship. So there's all kinds of things that we can do to get people involved, pull them out of their stuck mindsets and their mask, and that might include you. <laughs> it might even cause me to get out of my mask and my mindset hearing what all you're doing. But these are some suggestions. So I hope that you will take these Hello Self podcast moments and do something with the next phase of your life. Maybe something that you haven't done before, that, but you've always wanted to do. What have you got to lose? If you want to know more about my High Heels Cabaret, the very first TV show that we've done, and that's what we did for the first one, is basically videoed it or went in a studio and actually shot it. And don't be hard on me because it was my very first production in a on a tv show <laughs> it's just it's local but you can see that it's a one hour show on my um, youtube account and i will put that uh, out here so that you can go to youtube and see it so you can begin to understand what the high heels cabaret is about so thank you so much for being here God bless your journey ahead. And I hope that I have got you excited about the next chapter of your life. And that you've come up with something that maybe you've always talked about. There are no excuses now. I don't have the money. I don't. We're not talking about money here. We're talking about stepping out and doing something and learning and you can do it right where you are. I don't care if you've got three little girls running around in your house <laughs> and you're a single mom or you're a dad that said, I always wanted to do something too, but I never could figure out what it was. Whoever you are, whatever phase of your life you're in, I'm as old as dirt. So you can begin at any point. And if if you produce art, let's say you're an artist and you would like to do a, an art piece or at least finish up an art piece and tell people on the, I don't care. You come to me and tell me what your dream is and let's talk about it and we'll figure out something. <laughs> I hope that this has been helpful for you and that these four episodes of Hello Self the series that we specifically put together, get you started. Then maybe I could interview you after you've got a next chapter of your life started. And then you could give tips and strategies and advice to others who listen. So in closing, I am Patricia Leonard, the host of Hello Self Podcast. And all right, here we go again. Keep dreaming. I want you to just keep dreaming and keep manifesting. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.